Hello, this is Craig, and I'm going to teach you how to make a Minecraft-like environment here in Unity. Uh, this may be, this will definitely be uh, more than one video. So there are actually some libraries you can use for this, but um, I recommend against it. Every Minecraft-like has its own ideals and visions, uh, and if you use one of the b basic libraries that you can find on the internet, you won't know how to make those visions a reality. Uh, it's better to understand the engine from the ground up, and it's a pretty simple concept, so I'm going to teach it to you now. This is just a new project. There's nothing special about it. The only thing I added to it is this image, which is just some random scratchings to give our uh, environment some texture. So that's it. Nothing new. We're going to start now. First off is we're going to go ahead and import some basic Unity assets. So we want the character controller. Just import it all. And we want the Oh, I'll be moving a little bit fast, by the way, because I, I have a pretty strict time limit. And because I like things to be pretty, we'll import the skyboxes. Uh, it turns out that Fraps can't record this Unity editor, so I'm using Cam Studio, and Cam Studio has some pretty strict size limits. Alright, so what we want is this first person controller. This will be our character. Oh, wait, this has a camera in it, so delete the camera that Unity starts you with. You don't need it. Um, but this is the camera we want to put our skybox on, so let's go ahead and add a rendering skybox. There it is. And let's go ahead and go down to this, into skyboxes and grab one. There we go. Now if we hit play... Oh, skybox! We're actually now falling through midair. There's nothing to catch us. So let's go ahead and take a look. Where are we? We are here. Um, this is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Let's put ourselves at zero, zero, zero. And now let's go ahead and create a brick. And let's put it at zero, zero, zero. Oh, we're on top of each other. Let's put this guy above the brick. Now when we hit play, we'll be standing on a brick. The physics are already taken care of. But that is one hell of a dark brick. So let's go ahead and make it um, brighter first thing we need is a material. So let's go ahead, create material. We'll call it a tile mat, and we will go ahead and drag the tiles texture onto it, and then drag it onto the brick. Oh, look how dark it is. Let's go ahead and add ourselves a light. There you go. Hit play. Perfect. That's all of the Unity built-in assets we need. From here on out, everything is custom. So I hope you're ready for it. So let's create ourselves a new C-sharp script. We could name it anything, and maybe you could do it in JavaScript. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so let's call it a chunk. Uh, we probably won't get into why, but chunk is a better name for it. And we'll just drag it onto the cube. There it is. So let's open our chunk up. I'm using MonoDevelop. MonoDevelop is the included developing kit. It's not absolutely terrible, so it serves. So the first thing to realize about all of those beautiful Minecraft worlds is that those bricks are not individual objects. Um, that would be crazy. You'd have millions and millions of independent objects. Instead, each brick is usually identified by a very, very small number uh, of, of states. So for example, in this case, we'll be using a byte. So each brick is going to be represented by one byte. That's a number between 0 and 256. Public byte map. There you go. We're also going to go ahead and create a width, which we'll make default to 20. And that will be the size of the world we create. So in here we go map equals new byte width 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 and I always forget, I think you need that. Let's take a look. Yep. And then you go ahead and do for int x equals 0, x is less than width x plus plus. Uh, this is initializing our array here. Um, C sharp is kind enough to initialize it all to zeros, so we'll make zero empty space and we'll add in some actual solid space. Now here you have to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to go by unity um, uh, uh, x, y, z coordinates, or if you're going to use more sensible coordinates. Uh, we're going to use unity coordinates, which means this is actually a Z, not a Y. <sighs> we won't go into Y. Um, but basically, uh, we're going to make the lowest layer of this group. 
we're going to make it all solid. So map x0, z equals 1. So now we have a bottom layer that is solid bricks. Let's make the next layer up kind of choppy, just for texture's sake. So map x1, z equals mathf dot round to int random dot value. Now this will give us a number between 0 and 1. Unfortunately, we need a byte. And it will actually complain if you don't cast that, because an int and a byte are not the same thing. So we'll just cast it. There we go. So you won't be able to tell, because if I go back here and hit play, nothing happens. Um, oh, I, I always, I never remember which way it is with these. There we are. So here we are. If we hit play, there's no difference. All we've really done is define a map. We haven't actually used it. What we need to do is use it. All right, now here is the heart of the matter. First off, we're going to do some best practices stuff. Require component type of mesh filter. This means that the brick in question requires you to have a mesh filter attached to it. Uh, now we do have a mesh filter attached to it. It is right there. Um, so that's because we're going to be building a mesh. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a mesh. Protected mesh mesh. And then here we're going to say mesh equals new mesh. And then we're going to say, uh, uh, I guess we should say, get component mesh filter. And we're guaranteed to have one because of that require component up at the top. Dot mesh equals mesh. How exciting! So if you want to see what we just did, we just broke the brick. It's not there anymore. So you can see that the brick is still here in scene edit view. And we're still using the box collider so we can still stand on it, but there's no longer a mesh for it. Well, it's time to teach you how to assemble a mesh here in Unity. It's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to use um, a bit of a shortcut that is uh, maybe not best practices, but it is decent enough for our purposes. So we're going to create protected list vector3 verts equals new. And this will be our list of vertexes, but a mesh is not made of vertexes alone. We also need protected list int triangles. And just to future proof it a little bit, protected list vector2 UVs. So the verts are the pieces of our mesh, the triangles are how those pieces connect up, and the UVs are what part of the texture to display. So we're going to go ahead and create a new uh, uh, function, which we will call regenerate. Uh, we'll put that down here. Oh, come on, you. Public void regenerate. So here is where we do our work. Verts.clear, tries.clear. This doesn't matter now uh, because we're starting off with them clear. But if we ever want to make a change and then roll this, run this again, we're going to need to get rid of the old data. Also, Unity is a little bit picky. Um, if you assign a new set of vertexes and your old set of triangles is applied, it's probably going to throw some errors. So go ahead and say mesh triangles equals tries dot two array and that will clear out all of our triangles because tries is now empty and we've just set it to be an empty array all right so now what we have to do is actually generate all of the faces we need we're actually going to work on generating individual faces um, now I know some engines work on generating the uh, uh, the framework and then connecting it up with faces using the triangles but we're actually going to create four distinct vertexes for every single face. And that means that if you have a block that sticks up out of the ground, you're going to be wasting some faces. Um, and you're also going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to be wasting faces regardless. Uh, but, on, I mean, uh, sorry, you're going to be wasting vertexes regardless. But um, optimizing it at this point would be kind of annoying. So we'll do it by creating all of the faces. Every single face will have four vertexes. There will be no faces with shared vertexes. What am I talking about, you're asking? Shut up, you're making no sense. All right, this is what I'm talking about. So let's go back up here. This looks familiar. Let's grab this crap. We need it done here. 
But in this case, we also need y. We might as well go ahead and make it so that it reads right. So what do we need to do? All right, easy enough. Byte block equals map x, y, z. Woo, exciting, right? Now, if block equals zero, continue. We don't need to create anything that doesn't exist. So if we get here, we need to probably create something, but maybe not. How do we know which faces to create? I don't know. Let's go ahead and create a new function to determine that. Public bool is transparent. Int x, int y, int, come on, z. Uh, I get a lot of slowdown using Cam Studio here. So, well, how do we do this is transparent stuff? Uh, if, let's put in some safety, x is less than 0, or y is less than 0, or z is less than 0, or x is greater than or equal to width, or y is greater than or equal to width, or z is greater than or equal to width, then uh, return. Now you could either make this false or true. If you make it true, that means you're going to be drawing boundaries uh, at the edge of every uh, block. Otherwise, it means you're not. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make it true. So what we've just said is, if you're asking for something that's not on our map, we consider it to be transparent, i.e. not there. So then we say uh, return block, oh, sorry, map x, y, z equals 0. And that just says, if it's 0, it's transparent, otherwise it's not. Um, in the long run, we'll have to make that a lot more complicated, but for now, that'll work fine. So now we say if... Uh, oh, let's go ahead and split this off into its own function, too. Let's go function crazy. Draw brick x, y, z. Block. So we'll go ahead and put that... I tend to put shit in alphabetical order. Um, so let's go ahead and put it here. Draw brick int x int y int z byte block. All right. So there are six, one, two, three, four, five, yep, six possible faces we could be drawing. Let's go ahead and draw them. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to define a vector three corner. Uh, we'll call this um, start equals new vector three x y z. We'll need these two for later. Now, let's go ahead and do some work. If is transparent x, y minus 1, z. So if it's transparent above us, then we need to draw a face above us, right? Except in this case, it's actually below us. But that's OK. Either way, it works fine. So since we're doing that, we'll do offset 1 equals. Well, we need to do it, if it's at the top, we need to draw that face along the x-axis and the z-axis, because the y-axis is the one that we're offset by. So, there we go. This is the x-axis, this is the z-axis. So now we're going to make yet another function. I hope you haven't lost track yet. Brock. Yeah, let's go ahead and pass it to Brock. So, public void. Come on, you. It's like 100 degrees in here, sorry. If you're wondering why there's so much noise in the background, it's because it's 100 degrees in here. You may be wondering why I'm passing that block around. We'll need it for UV mapping. We probably won't even get there in this video. I'm certain we won't get there in this video. All right, so if we need to draw a face, then what we need to actually do is create four new vector threes. So those vector threes are vert.add start. Here they are, all four of them. Offset one, offset two, Offset 1 plus offset 2. Woohoo! So now we actually have the vertexes, but aren't we forgetting something? Like, 
a face. Actually, this is actually a, a, a little bit... E I do this because it's just a little bit easier to do it like this. So a face, these triangles are triangles that connect three vertexes. We have four vertexes, so we need two triangles. That means we need six integers. The way a triangle works is it lists the number of the vertex involved. So if we just started, this would be vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2, and vertex 3. So we need to go ahead and connect them, which would be something like this. Now I can never remember exactly which direction it is in my head because if you do them in the wrong direction they only show up pointing in the wrong way. Uh, triangles are um, they don't have a back face so if you get them wrong then you will end up with something that looks like cube? Oh, I f duh, I can't show you yet. You'll get, we'll probably end up with a very spotty, I'll show you in a minute. Ah, <sighs> that was kinda silly of me, so regenerate Remember this function here where we're doing all of the work? After we've drawn all of the bricks, we need to do mesh.vertexes equals verts.toArray mesh.triangles equals triangles .toArray I forgot that part, sorry about that. We also, for future proofing, need to go ahead and recalculate those normals. We're gonna need them. Look at that! I think I guessed right. So, uh, apparently that is the correct um, set of uh, order for those triangles to be added in. I was going to show you... Oh, what the heck, I'll go ahead and break it so I can show you. If we change the order here, like this, and hit play, then as you can see we've got some faces that are visible from above and some that are visible from below and that's kind of a pain in the ass so make sure you get that right or else you will feel foolish actually yeah that is right uh, so I just drew at the bottom so believe it or not this is kind of wrong I'll show you why here go ahead and create we want to do the top now right so let's go ahead and see how that looks Oh, okay, let's pause. So I'm in scene view right now, and you can see that we've got two layers. We've got the lower layer and the upper layer. But wait a minute, we can see the lower layer from the top. It's, it's not working out. That lower layer is pointed the wrong direction. We should only be able to see it from beneath. So uh, what's wrong is that we've passed it vector 3 dot right when we should in fact be passing it vector 3 dot left. But if we do it like that and just like that, then we'll end up offset in the wrong direction. So we need to actually add vector 3 dot right, like this. So in case I just lost you, what I've done is fallen off the map. What I've done here in scene view, so I haven't created any of the walls yet. I've only created the tops. So here you can see that uh, it's a little bit difficult to see because of there not being any walls, but you've got two bricks on the bottom and then you've got two bricks above. That bottom layer is all filled in, but the top layer is spotty. Remember how we created it like that? So here we can see the parts where the top layer is being drawn, there's no face for the layer beneath it. See that? This brick does exist. This brick down here does exist, but you can't see the top face so we don't draw bother to draw it. If we go down below you can see that we have the entire bottom drawn out because this is the bottom there's nothing beneath it so all of those faces need to be drawn. But wait 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 wait, wait you may be asking. Um, that's an awfully thin brick. You're right that is too thin. We do in fact need to take this here and add. So now, when we fall off again, now in scene view, when we look at it, you can see that the bricks have a serious thickness to them. They are thick. Now let's go ahead and go and just fill in the other walls real quick here. So we do that by simply saying copy, paste, paste, 
exciting. Delete x minus 1, delete x plus 1, delete z minus 1, delete z plus 1. Now the problem is we've got all this arranged for uh, the y-axis and we no longer need it for the y-axis. Uh, so here in the x-axis for example, here we've got a left um, but we're already to the left so we can't go any further left or else we'd screw up the brick. This actually needs to be up because we need to draw the left wall up and back. This here needs to be down because we need to draw the right wall down. Actually, I believe that that's backwards. I need this to be down and this to be... I'm oh, sorry, we need to be this to be down and this to be up. And so here, where we've got this as right, we need it to be up. And here, where we've got this being up, we need it to be... What is it? I've forgotten all of a sudden. Left. Yeah. Did I get this backwards with the X and the Ys? I think I might have. Let's go ahead and take a look. The z-axis is going to be crazy right now, so let's go ahead and comment that out. We don't want to get distracted. Alright, so did we get the x-axis correctly? No, we didn't. Look at that. What a sad state of affairs. So sometimes you run into something like this, and it's really easy to start getting your head all twisted up, and you're like, wait, which one is which? Um, you just got to break it down and make sure you understand which faces are drawing incorrectly. In this case, the problem is that we are drawing the faces too far to the side. So uh, we need to... Let's go ahead and make sure that each of these faces independently is drawing perfectly. So if we go back into Unity and press play, Play, you stupid. Now do we have any... Oh, look, there they are. They're in the right spot, but they're pointed the wrong direction. No problem, right? If they're pointed the wrong direction, then that means we've got the wrong one of these. And instead of down, we want up. And we get rid of this. Is that all we needed to do for that one? Let's go ahead and hit play again. And find out scene. Look at that. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and do the other wall. So this needs to be down, which means that this needs to be right and this needs to be up. Now if you were doing this your first time, you'd probably have to experiment with that. Now I'm sure that there are other ways to, you know, there's, there's good ways to memorize this and figure it out perfectly, but I want you to really understand that even when it feels complicated, it's not. You just have to isolate which faces you're screwing up and try again. So in this case, now both the X faces work. And we'll move on to the Z faces. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll both work first time, as if I'd been doing this before. So here, we don't need to draw back any further because the back or the front. Instead, what we need to do is draw up. This is probably down. So let's see if our luck holds out, shall we? Almost, but not quite. All of the Z planes are offset to the wrong side, it looks like. Are they? Ah, as I said, no editing, so you have to deal with this kind of crazy stupidity that I sometimes get. Um, I'd like to claim that every time I do it, it gets easier, but I always forget which faces are supposed to be offset by which amounts. It's just a thing um, that, I, that I never managed to figure out. Oh, you know what it is? Watch that be wrong. That was wrong.
right now anyone who's done this before is like, you're kind of an idiot. I'm like, yeah, I know. Sorry. Wow, we pushed it even further away from being correct. We're so talented. Let me go ahead and pause it, and I will come back once I've done this. Voila. So if we cruise around, we can see that this is a fully functional map. But there are some things missing. What things? Well, for starters... Oh no! Unity makes this part really easy. This is the big reason to use Unity for this. See this box glider? We don't need it! Get rid of it. Instead what we need is a mesh collider. There it is. So over here, remember this require component? We need another one. We're going to want to make a reference to that because we're going to use it. And we'll go ahead and fill that right here. Alright, so now we've set up our mesh collider to be our mesh collider. And down here, what we're going to do... I'm sure there's some way to make that work without setting it to null first, but setting it to null first works. Um, so what happens is this will automatically force it to recalculate every single time. So now we'll go back into Unity. And we'll fall through right away. Oh, you know what that is? It's because we're inside of the bricks. Um, there we are. There we are. Ooh, wasn't that easy? Now you may be wondering, what about the texture? What about editing stuff? What about this? What about that? I'm out of time and space on this Cam Studio recording, so I'm hoping that you will go ahead and tune in next time for the best.